digital property and the hunt of the first NFT. What do you think this is about? Well, the thing is that a few days ago, the District Court of New York handed down this decision, March 17th, in a case known as Free Holdings Inc. versus Kevin McCoy and Sotheby's Inc. It's an interesting in some case, very interesting. Let's see. Let's talk then about who, the parties, what, the property, when, the dates, and how, the story. Let's see what mentions here New York Times. Judge dismisses lawsuit over ownership of 1.47 million NFT. And what is this about then? Well, let's begin with who, the parties. Well, first, the plaintiff, Freeholding, also known, or you can follow up uh, via Twitter as Early NFT, sues the artist, Kevin McCoy, the auctioneer, Sotheby's, and it's not included in the lawsuit, but it's important to mention uh, the parties, Alex Amsel, Silly Tuna, and others, others' agents, uh, Monograph. We'll talk about Monograph later. What? Well, what with this is, this is a piece of art called Quantum, created by uh, Kevin McCoy in 2014. 2014, and then we'll see some dates interesting here. He minted this NFT. Important. The word, the idea existed of NFT, but NFT has a word, has a meaning, has a context, didn't exist back then, how we know it now, okay? When the dates, well, February, think the fifth, this Kevin McCoy using this name coin that is a fork of Bitcoin registered and minted the address where this uh, art, piece of art, this quantum could be seen displayed effectively was the first NFT. Pay attention to this date, February 5th. 2014, okay? So in Namecoin, you had to renew your subscription in order to have like the like the name, like the domain, you had it there. If you don't renew it, someone else can re -register, it, uh, re register and then be the owner of that the domain, okay? The domain. Then remember, Last year, or the day, the year before, in 2021, the fever of the NFTs. Well, Mike Winkelmann, people saw his art called "Every Days," the first 5,000 days, in 69.3 million dollars. We're talking March 2021, the moment of fever. Okay, that was uh, alternate by. Christie's, okay? The other one was alternate by Sotheby's, okay? Well, this was Christie's. Let's continue then. We will see this all famous NFT, the, 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 the monkeys, the apes. And then we'll see that in May 2021, McCoy mints his artwork, his quantum in Ethereum blockchain, okay? He didn't pay the, the name coin uh, blockchain. He didn't renew it. And well, that was free. So someone else could take that domain as effectively uh, Aaron Free Holdings did. So this uh, McCoy registered. Here it is, the mint. That's the date exactly. And we'll see the May twenty. Uh, May 28th, okay, has a non-fungible token. The word, the idea, the expression, non-fungible token didn't exist by the moment uh, he registered in Namecoin. Let's uh, think a little bit about, let's remember a little things about Ethereum. The white paper of Ethereum was released January 11th, 2014th. 
And it wasn't until July 30th, 2015, when the first block, the Genesis block, was released, existed. So by the moment McCoy minted a name coin, uh, the technology of tokens created by Ethereum didn't exist at all. So this is a most more advanced uh, blockchain. Of course, all the arts is going to be placed. Uh, now we'll see it there. But it was a great idea that he minted it in this, in May 2021. And why is that? Oh, well, and it was, it, it, right now, if you go there, it refers to an interplanetary file system where the, the piece of art is minted and is kept. It happens that in June 2021, Sotheby's includes in their auctions this uh, uh, art created by McCoy. And previously to that, well, it was created by Monograph, really interesting see Monograph. They develop all these uh, platforms and all this uh, creation of arts in order to put it as a as a blockchain, as a marketplace of arts. And he helps all the partners of Monogram are Sotheby's and also Christie's. Really interesting. Okay, let's continue then. Before the auction, early NFTs, you can see it in uh, Twitter if you want, uh, Freeholding Inc. from Canada tries to contact uh, Kevin McCoy, telling him that the piece of art is their own. They own it because they re-registered the domain in knowing.com. Well, the early NFTs never received any response from McCoy or nobody's. And if effectively, the auction went on and Silly Tuna bought Quantum for by paying one million four hundred seventy two thousand dollars okay so he has a new owner in in the, in the chain based in uh, ethereum and what happens then is uh, three holdings goes to new york specifically the southern district of new york uh, put up uh, an action against a lawsuit against Sotheby's and McCoy, mainly. Okay, and why is that? Because well, he feels he has been affected by the price and uh, the, the the piece of art was his property, and so on. And in March seventeenth, uh, March seventeenth, two thousand and twenty-three, is this decision. But what's the decision about? Well, remember that we began asking and saying we're going to hunt for the first NFT. And why I say and I put this and hunt? Well, I always like this kind of pictures and framing and paintings about the, the ducks hunting. And there is this place in Caracas called Greenwich or Greenwich, Greenwich, that is a bar uh, decorated like in the uh, British style, and there is this specific painting of duck hunts that reminds me all the time a famous case in U.S. Uh, case law that is called, oh, this is me while I was taking the picture and then inspiring me to prepare this. This case called Pierce versus Post that was known and the decision was by the the, the Supreme Court of New York. Coincidentally, also New York is the quantum's case. And what this, what is this uh, case about? This guy called, named Post, was chasing a fox, a fox hunt with horses, with dogs, with people, hours and hours, that's exhausting, and followed the dog, fox, and the fox was really tired and went to a loop near a beach, and this person, Pierce, find the fox, kill it, 
and grabs him and says, well, it's my fox. I kill him. It's mine. Post takes this case to the jurisdiction and tells him, well, I chased the dog. The dog is mine. On the contrary, Pierce says, no, it's mine. I hunted effectively. So the situation was about the possession or occupancy of the beast fear that uh, the beast has uh, things of nothing or nobody's thing. Nullus, ne res nullius, the thing in Roman law and the Justinian's Institute, the thing, nobody's thing. So the person that first grabs has possession and occupancy of the thing is the real owner. The important here in this case, among many things, is well, it's one of the most important cases on uh, property law in the United States, is the importance of possession or occupancy. In this case of the beast, of the animal, the nobody's thing, the, nus, the res nullius, has the one of the main uh, origins and sources of property and the institution of the Justinians Institute Institutes of Justinians was used as well as the Roman law uh, has the justification of this case first won by post then by a certiorari by peers so we'll see that United States is uh, part of the uh, common law uh, family law and Justinian Roman law is the civil law, continental law. It's important because of the, this uh, comparison of sources of law. Well, it was taken, as mentioned, at the New York uh, court that was more or less like this in those days, early 18, 1800s. And we'll see this important case is being referred not only as a property right law, a property law rights, uh, but also has the perspective, perspective of animal rights. We'll see this Pearson versus Post, uh, a book really interesting by Angela Fernandez. Uh, interesting to read in order to understand a little bit the idea of property and the rights of the animals. But let's go back to 2023 and the decision. Well, the decision more or less what it, 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 it deals with is if you have a domain, you own the domain. The domain is uh, another NFT. Of course, it's like, uh, well, it's another NFT. It's another asset. It's another non-fungible. It's that or not one. So when you re-register register an NFT, it brings the asset associated or those are different things. So this is more or less what the decision makes. But at the end, what declares is the court may only exercise declaratory judgment authority where there is an actual controversy. So and says there is no actual controversy and dismiss the amended complaint, more or less. Okay. So real... Uh, Freeholding is not entitled, according to this uh, decision, to make any claim. But after having this brief conversation, do you think that we should continue understanding the idea of property in the same way? The property rights, the property guarantees, the property uh, creation, the same ways like before? Or nowadays, during this digital era, we should we should rethink the idea of property. Well, let's see. Name coin, a fork of uh, Bitcoin. It happens that exists right now. It is well not brand new, but from the seventies and the uh, two thousand seventeen and so two thousand eighteen. Name coin is based on Ethereum blockchain, but also develops the idea of name service, Ethereum name service. And also you can have your, like exists the DNS, you can have domains for Web3 based in Ethereum name service. But the thing is that also you have to pay the renewal. 
what happens if you don't renew your subscription, your 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 domain? You lose it. You lose it. It's a nullius thing. It's a res nullius. It's nobody's thing. Anyone can re-register the domain and all with it. Those are things that have to be solved in a moment that we have the tokenization of everything. Tokenization is the property, the exercising the property. And for instance, we have this. In Europe, they're developing a lot the Mika law that is markets in crypto assets. And specifically, it is excluded the NFT tokens. Okay, the NFT in general idea is it's excluded. I'm not telling, well, it's a state they have to regulate anything. We need to have another normative, normative system. But the thing is that we have to study really, really the phenomenon of property and digital property. We cannot see it the same way we understand property historically. And because we have, we mentioned it, whether we have the legal family of the continental law and the common law, Probably we have to rethink that digital law and digital property is a layer that brings all the ideas together, a brand new that brings also that. We have to rethink a lot of property and the scope of, and limitation of property as a property, has a service. My invitation is to rethink, to restudy, to recreate the idea of regulation, legislation, and normativity the property concerning online, offline, material, immaterial property, in-chain and off-chain property. We have to rethink the sources of law and the sources of property too. Have you heard the word dereliction? That's an idea of Roman law. What is the dereliction? Voluntarily abandon the property. For instance, could be my sunglasses, whatever. I can abandon them. But I can, you know, I can also recover it again before someone else's. But what happens if you lose your your or you don't pay the renewal? Is it abandoning? Is that the religion? So you abandon all the property? Those are the things that we have to think about digital res nullius. Does exist? It created alone or was created by someone and then you keep the property. One important thing of the new kind of property or digital property or property 3.0 is that the owner, the creator of the property can fix the, the limitations. In the case specifically of McCoy, he produced, he created, he programmed some royalties of any further uh, trans, uh, uh, transferences, uh, transfers. So we'll see how the idea of property have to be rethought. Let's continue a little bit here. You have laws concerning treasure troughs. What happens in digital space? What ha could happen is someone finds the way of recovering a lost or forgotten private key. Is it a treasure? He found a treasure. Does he has to uh, declare it somewhere else or to someone? What happens? What could happen if McCoy wouldn't be alive? The case is really interesting because McCoy, the author, he himself, he, re re he minted in 2014 and also in 2021. But what happens if the author, like happens with all the important uh, uh, art, dies? And it's not there to say, well, yes, I certify this is my, 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 my piece of art, my creation. So a lot of things we have to have in mind with this. Where is the data? Where is the property? Remember that the property in these moments is not, and specifically in the NFTs, you can have it in your pen drive, or you can have it in chain. You can have it, well, an in interplanetary file system. But then we have to pay attention to the storage. Where is it going to be stored? Is it going to be decentralized? 
is it going to be then exactly an NFT? You can download it, but it is the only one. So we have to see it. We have like BNB, uh, Greenfield project, really interesting. It could be uh, interesting to talk with these guys. What could we do about the, the secure trust, centralized or decentralized the property in in chain, off chain, in line, offline? Oh, and of course, have to be free or not. When we talk about digital property, there are some dimensions that we have to study. We have to rethink. We have even though denying, I'm being skeptical about other considerations previously. We have to talk about programmable property. The creation of property is a fundamental right and has to be guaranteed. But now, who creates it? Who fixes it? Who establishes? Who fix and, and controls any controversy? Okay. Probably decentralized justice is a good solution, like Claros, for instance. Coming back again to Sotheby's and Christie's, and this is really interesting, and it came to my mind when I was preparing this presentation. Sotheby's was founded in 1744, and Christie's in 1766, and now on, they're working on this new dimension of arts and things and auctions, digital words, metaverse. If Sotheby's and Christie's, the are of the 18th century's companies, are moving themselves, they are uh, preparing themselves for new ways of uh, interacting with, with, with the clients and society, why can't we not? Why do we stop thinking or the legal thinking has to be stopped in some very traditional things. We have to renew a lot of things. We are in the era of digital trans uh, transition. We are in the era of artificial intelligence. We have to rethink a lot of uh, institutions, probably recovering their own original plan, the original idea and purposes. Again, any conclusions that we can arrive to, it is going to be personal. I just wanted to share with you some of my, my, my thoughts, some of my ideas on these uh, situations and coming from the, the, the legal perspective and legal thinking. Again, and I'll be repeating all the time, when we talk about digital transformation, we are not talking only taking technology to continue doing the same things. We can have technology and have primitive culture. We have to advance to a more developed uh, culture of things. The digital transformation is for freedom, is for, for protection of fundamental rights. And again, I would like, I want to uh, thank you for the opportunity of uh, sharing with you these thoughts and specifically in this university where you have this specific program on intelligence, artificial intelligence and law. This master, I, I think is going to be one of the first masters on this field that are going to show the path to other masters. Thanks, and I'll keep continuing receiving. And if you have any question, I'll be glad and happy to answer.